Hi, my name is Michelle from Half Fork Wheel Travel, and I'm here with the Fresno County Library for the Fresno County Summer at Your Library cooking sessions. This week we're going to do fruit and veggie go go, which will have fresh plum upside down cake, curried carrots, and to top it all off, a fresh squash and zucchini tart. So, how do you like the fruit and veggie go go so far? We have one more dish left to do the zucchini and yellow squash tart. It looks fancy, it sounds complicated, it really is not. So we have two steps to it, actually three, but it's pretty easy. So we're going to take one container of ricotta cheese. We have a little bit of chives and a little bit of Italian seasoning. I'm only going to put a little bit in this and the rest I'm going to add in to the zucchini that we have in this bowl. We have one large zucchini and two medium sized yellow squash that I've mandolined up or cut very thin so that I can layer them in the dish. We have about a half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. This is optional. You don't need to add it. It just adds a little bit of flavor. We're going to put some in here and some in here again just to give it a little bit more flavor boost. Garlic powder, just like the carrots, garlic powder goes really well with zucchini and yellow squash. And put a little bit in both. That way the flavor carries through. Now salt I'm going to be a little sparing with on the ricotta. I'm going to put about a half a teaspoon in there and a little bit more in with the zucchini. So we're using not quite a full teaspoon of salt and one egg. The egg is going to help bind with the ricotta and make it stick together as opposed to getting runny when the moisture from the zucchini is comes in contact with it in the oven. So we're just going to mix this up. And this is this step would be good for a child to help with with supervision. If you are not using eggs then you could use an egg substitute or even a little bit of sour cream again you're to give a little bit of a, a dairy binder cream cheese would work as well just make sure it's room temperature first and cream it so that way all the lumps are out otherwise you're going to have little bites of cream cheese without any flavor okay so there's the filling it's all mixed together the egg is all incorporated that way you don't get surprised of a baked egg in the middle of it as well so for the zucchini, we have the seasonings in there. I'm going to add just a smidge of olive oil, not much more than a dash, maybe a tablespoon or two at best. And we're going to toss the zucchini. You want the oil to coat everything. If it looks like you need a little bit more oil to make sure that everything is covered, then add, again, just a little bit at a time. Once you add it, you can't take it out. So make sure it's all stirred up. That way the seasonings are also distributed evenly. And we have a couple that we're trying to sneak through without getting covered. So we're going to take care of that real quick. All right. So see, that's real simple. Everything's coated. Has just a little bit of olive oil or seasonings. So I'm going to set these off to the side. We're going to get the puff pastry out and make the tart. So while the squash is marinating with the oil and seasonings we're going to get the, the pastry ready to go into the oven. So we have just a little bit of all-purpose flour and we have these are the remnants of another dish of puff pastry. You can also use pie dough or a really stiff biscuit dough. Biscuit dough is a little bit more tricky because it will puff up quite a bit but not in a good way. So we're going to put a little bit of flour down. The idea is that way the dough has something to not stick to the surface of the pan or me for that matter. So the goal here is to roll this into a rectangle. You want it long enough 
to cover the pan and wide enough as well but the trick is not rolling back and forth you're going to roll with control so we're rolling out a little bit this way and then turn it and roll it the other way and we want this to be thin so that it crisps up and not get soggy but also keeping it so that way all of the edges are covered and there's not a hole in the middle Look, okay, we have an air bubble there. I'll go ahead and pop that. Again, this is leftover dough, so if you have another project, you can always freeze dough and reuse it later. And what I'm probably going to wind up doing, because it is going to be wider, I think, than the pan, is we're probably going to roll it out as thin as we can, fit it to the pan, trim off what we need, and then spackle in the middle. This is your kitchen. You can do it. Doesn't hurt anything because at the end of the day, all anybody's going to taste is the food. They're not going to look underneath to see if you had to piece it together. And if it starts sticking, just just a pinch of flour. Again, you just want enough so that it doesn't stick. You don't want to get too much flour on it or on you. That's where the apron comes in. All right. Let's start fitting this in. You want to be very careful in this case since it's a little stretchy and fighting me a little bit. I'm going to make sure that it covers the sides because I can trim it after I get it filled. As you can see, we have a little bit that is trying to escape in the corner. So we're going to take a little bit of dough, just stretch it out, and piece it in. By the time it's done baking, nobody will know the difference. All right. A little bit more here because there is a hole there. We don't want that. All right. So I think this will work. Again, we're at the, the beginning stages. It's the end that counts. So, we have the tart that's in the pan. A little overhang, that's fine. All right, so we're going to take the ricotta and put a very thin layer on the bottom. We don't want to put very much. We don't want the bottom to get soggy. Just a smidge to give it a little bit of moisture and a little bit of flavor. All right, so now's the part you're going to get messy. Just roll with it. But it's fun, and if you have older children, they can help with this as well. You're going to take zucchini and do a layer of zucchini. Usually takes about three per across. And then you're going to alternate with the yellow squash. And that was a small one, so we'll do two. And then do another layer. And you're just barely overlapping from the rope above it. Think of it as tucking them in. Okay, so we have one layer done. We're going to take the ricotta and do another layer. You can go a little bit thicker on this one. You want the zucchini coated. If you have a little bit of shredded cheese, you could mix that in as well, give it a little bit more ooey gooeyness. And now we do another layer. And it helps to alternate the yellow squash and the zucchini between the layers. That way as you cut it, you get a nice burst of color. Alright, so we have the second layer done. It looks like we have a little bit of room left, so I'm going to add 
a, another very thin layer of the ricotta. Not much, just a tiny little bit, again, just to help stick things together. That's where the egg is going to come in handy. Just a smidge, not very much at all. And I have quite a bit of zucchini left over, so I'm just going to layer it and make one more layer. It's going to be probably a little bit haphazard and mostly zucchini, because apparently I have a lot more zucchini than yellow squash, but that's okay. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You use what you have. And this last row is a little haphazard, but that's okay because we're going to be topping it with some cheese. So I have a little bit of ricotta left. You can just very carefully, because your pan is really full now. Again, you can use a cake pan if you want, whatever is easiest. I have a tart pan because I like how the bottom lifts out. But if all you have are cake pans or even a sheet pan, just make less layers. If you use a cake pan, it's going to take longer to, to bake because of the depth of the pan. If you use the sheet pan method, it's going to cook a lot quicker because less layers. All right, so this is the cheese or the ricotta. Let me get some shredded cheese to top it with and we'll be all set to go. All right, one last thing before we top it with the cheese is we're going to clean up the edges. So this is where you just take a butter knife and go along the edge. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. The goal is to just make it even with the pan. So that way, when it bakes, you have a nice edge. And again, it doesn't have to be picture perfect. This is leftover dough, so it's going to be a little bit rugged or rustic. But if you're using pie dough or a sheet of puff pastry from the beginning, just roll it flat and line your pan with it. And if you have enough edges, you can always crimp the edges with either your fingers or take your fork and just press the edges. Make it all nice and pretty. This is going to be a rustic tart because I had not a lot of dough left, but I made it work. Again, your kitchen, use what you have, get creative. So, so that's done. Let's top it with the cheese. And this is just a regular cheese mixture, probably a Colby Jack blend. If you like cheddar, use cheddar. You don't have to top it with cheese, but I do recommend it. It gives it a little extra color and flavor, and we like flavor. So I'm going to put this in the oven, a 350 oven for about 40 minutes or until the puff pastry is golden and crisp and the top is golden, the cheese is melted. Keep an eye on it after 30 minutes just to make sure it doesn't burn or overcook. But you should be good to go for about 40 minutes. Again, it depends on the size of the pan. So let's get this going. I'll see you in about half an hour. All right, so it's been about 40 minutes have passed since we put the tart in. Look how gorgeous that looks. So one of the good things about doing a tart pan is the bottom will lift up and you can pull it out. So I'm going to set it down here and we're going to cut it very carefully. It's been sitting for probably about 15 minutes to cool off. It's still very warm. Use a serrated knife. If you wanted to let it cool completely you could do so. And again watch your fingers. Safety first. But you can see the layers of zucchini and yellow squash with the ricotta and it's a nice light crispy crust. And you can't even tell that I used leftover dough. So we'll do another piece so you can see just how delicious this is. Alright, so we have piece number two and a little teeny tiny one to try. So I cut a little piece off the end to try. So the garlic kicks it up quite a bit. 
The red pepper in there gives it quite a personality, but it's really delicious with the squash cooked. Perfectly tender with a crispy crust and the creamy ricotta mixture in the middle makes it just a really good side dish. Or you could also use this as a main dish if you want to go for a meat this night. This would also work with asparagus, so I would recommend giving that a try. Give me a minute to plate up the other two dishes and you can see what the entire meal looks like. Well, we're at the end of Fruit and Veggie A Go I hope you enjoyed the recipes and I do hope you try them. So here we have our curried carrots. We have our plum upside down cake. And last but not least, we have our delicious and super easy zucchini and yellow squash tart. So I'm going to try the cake because that's the only thing I haven't taken a bite of yet. We'll see how it is. So the cake is nice and light. The plums have cooked into the cake and that brown sugar mixture at the top just made a delicious glaze. So I hope that you try this. Let me know. Drop a line in the comments or send an email to Fork Travel and we'll go from there. You can find the recipes on ForkTravel.com and you can watch a video off the Fresno County Library website and also off of ForkTravel.com as well. Remember, life is too short for bad food.